with clear nighttime skies and very weak winds, strong stratification develops near the ground. Under these conditions, recent analyses suggest that existing boundary layer theory does not work. This common situation can be seen by observing the motion of fog. First, we examine the better understood weakly stratified boundary layer, and then look at what is known about the strongly stratified case and how existing theories and models break down when applied to it. On nights with partial or full cloudiness or sufficient wind speed, the depth of the boundary layer and influence of surface radiative cooling may extend upward to 100 meters or more through turbulent mixing. That is, the boundary layer depth may be 100 meters deep or more. The surface layer is often considered to be the lowest 10% of the boundary layer. This is illustrated in the upper panel of the figure which shows the colder surface layer in blue with warmer air just above the surface layer shown in red. Parameterization of surface fluxes for this case is normally well approximated by similarity theory based on atmospheric variables in the surface layer. We will nominally refer to this case as the weakly stable surface layer. The lower panel illustrates nights with clear skies and very weak winds, when the boundary layer and surface layer are much thinner and may not even be definable. In this case, much weaker turbulence and downward heat flux can lead to quite rapid cooling near the surface. We will refer to this case as the strongly stable surface layer. In the weakly stable case, eddies are constrained by the ground surface. In this idealized example, the smallest eddies are constrained to the lowest few meters, small ground loops, mid-sized eddies in the lowest 10 meters, green loops, yet larger eddies constrained primarily in the lowest 15 meters, blue, and so forth. While the turbulence is never this simple, this illustration of the potential influence of the ground surface forms the basis of existing similarity theory for parameterizing turbulence and turbulence fluxes near the surface. In the very stable case shown in the lower panel, the stratification is so strong that even eddies close to the surface do not directly interact with it. Stratification becomes a much greater constraint on vertical eddy size than the ground surface does. This case is sometimes casually referred to as the Z less case since the height above ground, Z, no longer determines the vertical size of the eddies. The Z less condition extends downward so close to the ground that a surface layer cannot be defined. In fact, primary generation of turbulence sometimes occurs at higher levels and then intermittently bursts downward toward the surface. For the weakly stratified case, the influence of the ground surface is generally formulated as being proportional to a mixing length which is parameterized as increasing linearly with height above ground, that is L equals kappa Z. The constant of proportionality is kappa, the von Karman constant, approximately equal to 0.4. The mixing length is considered to be proportional to the size of the eddies. In the weakly stratified case, the vertical size of eddies decreases with increasing stratification. This effect is incorporated into the formulation by dividing kappa z by phi, the so-called stability function. Phi is unity with no stratification and increases with increasing stratification. Under very stable conditions, the vertical size of the eddies is much smaller and the mixing length L is expected to be very small. However, numerical formulation of L for this case is unavailable. The different character of the weakly stable surface layer versus the very stable surface layer has been used to introduce our current level of understanding and modeling capability. But these two examples are idealized approximations. Real turbulence is much more complex and often falls between these two cases. The following photos help to visualize Z-less conditions in the strongly stable case using both natural and machine-generated fog. 
Evidence of ZLS conditions are revealed by striation of fog layers, typical in summer and early fall morning conditions at this site near Corvallis, Oregon, USA. This photo shows an example of striations with little or no distortion by larger eddies that would be directly interacting with the ground. The turbulence is limited to very fine scale diffusion which blurs the edges of the striations and can lead to eventual elimination of individual ones. The eddies responsible for this diffusion correspond to vertical length scales that are quite small compared to the height above ground, possibly as little as a few centimeters. Striations of various thicknesses may occur. The causes of the striations are not known, but could include layers of vertical convergence, that is, horizontal divergence, sources of air from slightly warmer surfaces flowing over colder air, and former mixing layers where condensation occurs at the upper edges. Here is shown a thin surface fog layer with a detached striation. The upper layer yields to significant event mixing on its upper surface. Lack of mixing adjacent to the tall canopy leads to less downward heat flux and less vertical mixing of near surface moisture. As a result, a thin fog layer forms at the surface which is not disrupted by significant turbulent mixing. The striations of fog at higher levels adjacent to the canopy upper story but over the field suggest very weak fine scale diffusion. Further away from the canopy in the center of the field, where the flow is not as weak, more significant but still weak mixing leads to downward heat flux and downward mixing of drier air that prevents fog formation. Eventually, fine scale diffusion reduces the integrity of the striations. Instabilities confined to a surface layer seem to feed development of a striation at the top of the layer. Left to right flow on the order of only 10 centimeters per second is little affected by a fence and road bed. The road is approximately one meter higher than the adjacent field. The flow in this cold pool is sufficiently stratified that surface obstacles do not significantly perturb the flow. Pressure fluctuations induced by the obstacles tend to be quadratically proportional to the wind speed and thus are very small for weak winds. As a result, the flow appears to be almost laminar, though very weak fine scale diffusion gradually modifies the striations with time. A nearby vineyard induces more small scale diffusion that eliminates striations. Each leaf triggers small eddies. Thin surface flow, sometimes referred to as skin flow, is commonly trapped in the lowest few tens of centimeters. In spite of vortex type motions, the fog survives. Uplifted fog elements generally sink back to the surface, if evidently with little net vertical transport. Skin flows are common and reveal a variety of eddy structures. Their survival implies partial decoupling from the overlying airflow. This video shows the time history of some sample striations. The video is sped up 16 times. In real time, the motions are very slow and visually barely detectable, but when sped up, the video reveals that the striations are indeed changing, partly due to weak fine scale diffusion. However, horizontal advection and the use of a single camera can lead to false detection of merging and separation. A microfront passing from left to right leaves striations in its wake. Farther behind the front, the striations have been at least partially eliminated due to fine scale diffusion. It is not known if the layering made visible by the fog is due to structure and relative humidity that depends at least partially on temperature structure, or to structure and moisture alone, that is, variations of specific humidity. Wave-like motions propagate through the striations. 
While such motions normally do not eliminate them, they can enhance small-scale diffusion and reduce the striation's integrity. Wave-induced sinking motion can locally eliminate fog through adiabatic warming and evaporation. Slanting sun rays effectively visualize the striations.